All right, welcome to video number five of the How to Wire Schneider PLC series. We are working with the Modicon M221 family, and today's lesson is going to be wiring syncing inputs when you have got a transistor model. Let's take a look at what those transistor models are. Take a look at the part number of the PLC you have in front of you. You are looking for a T or you are looking for a U at the very end. All of these modicons uh, in this family are going to have a TM221 at the very beginning. Then they're going to have one or two letters in this range over here, which is going to be C, C, M, C, E, or M, E, which will tell you if it's cartridge, monolithic, or Ethernet enabled. And then you're going to have the total number of I.O. points, which will be listed next, 16, 24, 40. For this video, though, what we're looking for is it has to have these. There is one other model, the TMs, and that's going to be the R style. Do not be using the R's inside of here. Let's start by taking a quick look at our, excuse me, uh, data sheet that we have in the manufacturer's manual over here. What we are doing is we are working with syncing, and syncing is when we are going to be having the negative attached to our common. And we see that inside of here. Here, let me do that one time, a bit more neat. On my drawing over here, that we have the uh, this brought in over here, and that we've got an external DC support source that we are then going to go and fuse and send a hot stinger out to our components. Do also note this note right down here at the very bottom. What they're talking about is that you should not be using these NC over here, and it does cause a little bit of confusion on these PLCs because usually when I see common right next to a set of terminals that are labeled NC. In my electrician mind, I think common and normally closed. These are not normally closed over here. These are to be not connected. So literally, NC means no connection. Do not put anything into those two terminals. We do as well have on these transistor types the option to go and use fast inputs. I0, I1, or I6, or I7 going to be the nominal ones. Let's take a look as well at the ratings of these inputs. We're dealing with these transistor types here right now. What we see is that they have got a nominal value of 24 volts DC, but they've also got a high low range inside of that. And what we mean by that is that 24 volts over here and zero volts are the two ranges that we should be going between. Over here though, it tells me that I've got a voltage at state one as being anything greater than 15 volts. In other words, any volts that comes in higher than 15 volts is a guaranteed high or a one on my PLC. Anything that is going to be below five volts is going to be a guaranteed zero over here. So we'll place that as being five volts. That would be a guaranteed zero. What that does leave us with is this range that's going to be in the middle that is going to be ambiguous. And that's going to be referred to as the undefined range. And really, if you bring in a voltage into an input in this undefined range, whoops, sorry, I just jumped ahead there too far. But if I bring in a voltage in this undefined range, let's say it was 12 volts over here. It's not that it's not going to cause any operation. It's just that Schneider will not guarantee what that operation could be. It could go high, it could go low. So what you're looking to do is always to maintain as close to the nominal rated values as possible on your inputs. 24 volts if you want to trigger it, or 5 volts or less so that it triggers reliably as a zero. Okay. Now let's take a look at our hardware that we have. Over here we have got a power supply, same as what we saw in the very first video there. We have a power supply that is feeding into a DC power supply. So the AC converts to DC. Then we take that DC, we run it through one of these fuse holders over here, and we run it over to our transistor. It's a TM cartridge style with a T at the end. It's gonna be a transistor syncing type that we have. This Syncing transistor type that we have allows us now to go and make the rest of our connections. You'll note that unlike the relay type, which had an internal power supply, this one doesn't have an internal power supply because the manufacturer knows you need to have 24 volts on site anyways in order to power everything up. So we're going to do everything external. Let's start by putting in our connection to common. We know that for us to be syncing, we need to take our common and we need to make that a negative. So we start with that jumper right over there. From that jumper, we can also take it on to other further devices. If you're familiar with your European wiring codes, you know that brown is going to go and be your positive, blue is going to go and be your negative, and black is going to go and be your signal. And so if we've got a three wire type of sync, uh, sensor over here that's what we are going to go and utilize so we might as well continue on with that black from here 
over to my negative component, which would be this one over here. We'll stick two wires underneath one terminal. This is pretty common. Yes, we would probably use distribution on a bus bar in the field, but we're just drawing this out to make sure we get the connections correct. All right, the next thing that we would do is we would go and take our DC power supply. Remember, this thing can put out a lot of current. So we are going to go and run that thing through a fuse holder. So we've got that CC style of fuse holder that is gonna be sitting on my DIN rail. And we take a hot stinger out from that fuse holder that's now protected to my field devices. And we can go from there as well. We can go one further and we can make that connection onto my sensor that I have over here. Last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run in all the rest of our signals. So now that we've got the push button with power at it, we can go and take a signal in. So we'll take this one into I0. We'll take this one into I1 like that. And this signal over here, if we're doing this for a fast counter off of the sensor, we would have to go and use I6 or I7. So we'll just take it into the closest one, I7 over here. The type of sensor that we would be using in this, by the way, for us to be going with a syncing style of wiring over here is we would need to go and have a PN type of sensor and you're always looking at the very first letter of the sensor type which is going to go and give you a hint as to what it outputs this one outputs a positive p is for positive which would make sense it's basically taking the positive that's going inside of here and switching that through the sensor and sending that back down and in so that's our pnp style of sensor okay that's one of our cartridge styles let's take a look at the monolithic style exact same concept as before just a slightly different body we see we have start with the ac in we take that ac we convert it into dc through a dc power supply and then we see we take that dc power supply we fuse our live line we bring it into our power supply that we have over here this one's got the shield in place sitting over top so you can see all the ratings 24 volt zero volt and the ground we have it grounded down all of that's covered inside the first video if you need more details on it the rest of this is going to be done the same as before. We are going to go and take our common since we are looking to be doing syncing. We're going to take our common to negative. So we'll start with that over here. From here, we'll take it into the common terminal. And both of these are the exact same point. If I zoom in over here, you'll see that they're both labeled as being COM0. Internally, they have got a connection. However, if you feel better about it, you can go make a external connection as well, stick a jumper over top. It's really not necessary, it's redundant, but some people feel better about it. So we'll put that on there. All right, let's go and take our live line now from my DC power supply. I'm gonna feed into my fuse holder. From my fuse holder, I am then going to go and feed out to my field devices so we will feed to this push button we will feed to this push button and we might as well finish our feed off to the positive lead as we just saw a little bit ago of that sensor that we have over there while we're on that sensor we might as well also go and tie in our negative so we'll take our negative over this time we'll make it connect under the same screw right over there now we've got our sensor completely powered up same type as before a pn P because we're still doing the syncing. Last thing that we're going to do is it'll go and wire in all the rest of my field inputs now. So this one over here, we will take this one into one of my fast counters. In this case, we'll select zero as being one of my fast counters that I can use. Zero, one, six, and seven are available. And then we'll take these ones into other available inputs. We'll take that one into one. We can take this one into number two like that. And that's it. Now we have covered the Trend, uh, syncing wiring for transistor styles of PLC.